guidelines which say, uh, I no longer have to quarantine, but I need to wear a mask for three more days. So if I don't come close to you and don't talk to you, it's because I love you. <laughs> uh, I'm avoiding people, I'm going to stand back, I'm not going to shake hands, I'm going to keep the mask on except for the sermon. Uh, if you are immune compromised or anything, there are masks at the back if you're nervous. I think they say I'm not contagious at this moment, but if you don't want to take chances, there are masks at the back. Um, all right, today I continue the sermon series on 40 Days of Prayer, uh, today with David and Goliath. Uh, let us turn our hearts to worship God. <laughs>
was turn to God using the prayer that is printed. Together, God of grace, our fears, our worries, and our doubts can be such giants in our lives. Each day they wash over us until we come to believe that we are alone in our darkness. There seems to be so much wrong in the world. We are convinced that there is nothing good that we can do. Forgive us, God of hope. Remind us that if we but open our hearts, you will heal us. If we but listen to your words, we will hear peace and joy. If we but open our eyes to you, we can go forward to serve our sisters and brothers, even as we have been served by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the silence of the next moment, I invite you to lift to God any personal prayers that are in your heart. God of grace, we know, loves us, redeems us, forgives us, and sets us free to new life. We thank God for this mercy and this grace. Thanks be to God. David said, 
The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. He took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. When the Philistines drew near to meet David, David ran quickly to the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, striking down the Philistine and killing him. There is no sword in David's hand. From Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. The word of the Lord.
Let's say a prayer. Gracious God, we ask your blessing today. Help us. Help us to hear your word for us. Help us to understand your message. And help us to go out and share your grace in the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Doing a little readjusting. New in preparation for this sermon, I never realized that uh, Goliath came out and taunted the people of Israel for 40 days. <coughs> Again, we have another 40. 40 straight days of taunting. But it's right there in verse 16. For 40 days, the Philistine came forward and took his stand morning and evening, taunting, teasing nasty, for 40 days, morning and evening. One big, mean, nasty giant stopped every single person in the army of Israel. For 40 straight days, twice a day, every morning, every evening, first thing they heard in the morning, the last thing they heard before trying to go to sleep, or, or trying to go to sleep, I should say, the giant taunted and teased and strutted and shamed 40 straight days. The Israelites were beaten before they even started. You see, that's the thing. Goliath didn't actually do anything, if you notice. He did not kill anyone there. He didn't even hit anyone there. He didn't even try to hit anyone there. He just talked and looked big. But the Israelites thought they were beaten. So they were beaten. The Israelites could not even step out. Not even one man of God stood up and stepped out until the boy, David, who, by the way, who was just there because he was delivering lunch to his brothers, until the boy, David, stepped out in faith. You know the story, you've heard the story, you've probably acted out the story, I have sung about the story, you've, brought, you've known David and Goliath most of your lives. Um, the shepherd boy, with a slingshot and five smooth stones against the giant, mighty warrior, and the message? Trust in God. God can do anything. Trust God. Now, I've been hearing that trust God message a lot lately. Perhaps you have. Trust God. Trust God in all circumstances. Trust God always. Trust God. It served David well throughout his life, not just at this occasion. When David remembered to trust God, he succeeded and he did well. When David forgot God, David failed. Trust God. Clear message. Here, here in this story, the shepherd boy, the young man, uh, was absolutely confident in God's presence and God's power. God's power. Not his own. He didn't know any better, maybe. Nothing got in the way of David and his faith. Trust God. Absolutely trust God. There are so many lessons in this story. That's why we all know it. There are so many lessons in the life of David. Uh, but to narrow the story down just for this sermon for today, midway through our 40-day journey in prayer, what can this story add to our journey of prayer and faith these days? Beyond trust, beyond faith that God can do anything, beyond knowing that God is in charge, God has a plan, God is on our side. All of these things are important, but what else can the story of David and Goliath teach us? I want to talk about three things. Giants, uh, small stones, and big faith. So, giants first. Uh, as you approach God in prayer in these days, 
What giants do you face? Think about that. Uh, as we approach God as a congregation and look to God's future for us, what are the giants that hold us back? or stand in our way? What are the giants? What are the problems, the challenges, the crisis, the difficulties that seem insurmountable? I'm not going to make a list. I have my list. Things that are stopping us, things that are stopping me, things that are holding us back, things that worry me, things that perhaps you are struggling with. We have our lists. Uh, things. Stupid things, generally. But here's the truth of the story. None of those giants are real. None of those obstacles are greater than God. God can do anything. And we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. We know this. David knew this. Trust God. So, go ahead, if you must, make your list. Name your giants. Uh, what is holding you back? What is holding us back as a congregation? Recognize any giants that are taunting and teasing. Then recognize it's just talk. It's, it's not truth. The truth of God is stronger than any giant, than any obstacle. The truth of God is more powerful than any fear. Fear seems substantial, but God is more powerful by far. We don't have to be big and strong in our battles because God is greater still, greater and stronger and more powerful and more loving than any demons or any giants that we can even imagine. God is more powerful, period. God is greater. So name your giants, but then strike them down. Take them out. Uh, those false giants have no power. Our God is greater. So the next lesson. First, the giants are smaller than we think. Second, the small stones are greater than we realize. So we don't need cannonballs. We don't need boulders. These tiny stones that God has given us are plenty, more than enough. Whatever gifts God has given us, whatever our small stones are, that's enough, more than enough. But the gifts we've been given are always more than enough by God's grace. By God's grace and in God's presence, we can do great things. God can handle anything. So what are our, what are your five stones? What are our five stones? What's in your bag of tricks? What are your gifts from God? Uh, again, make your list. And this time, really make your list. Name your smooth stones that God has given to you. For each of us, our list will be different. The my stones are different from your stones. Uh, my gifts are different than your gifts. Those gifts that God has given you to face whatever comes next. Maybe that's family. Maybe friends. Maybe congregation. Maybe peace in the moment. Good health. A very good small stone. Confidence in God's grace. Love of neighbor. Certainty of call, certainty that you are where you are meant to be at this time, doing what you are meant to be doing. Maybe your small stone is a talent to share or a gift to pass on. Maybe it's a word of assurance or encouragement. Name your stones, your gifts from God, those things you have been given that help you to conquer your giants. And perhaps help others to conquer their giants as well. As a congregation, what are our five stones, our gifts from God? Uh, what gifts has God given this congregation that will help us to move forward in faith? Uh, perhaps 
our heritage. That's one stone, one gift from God. 156 years right here on this spot, in this very place, on this corner, serving God and Gardner. What a gift from God. 2,000 years following Jesus Christ. Twice that many years following Yahweh, God of Abraham. Generation upon generation serving God and loving others. A great stone gift from God. Another stone is our wonderful gifted people who volunteer, who share freely and consistently serving fully in this congregation and in the world. What a multiplicity of gifts we have to offer. What many gifts from God we are able to share. What's the third stone? I would say maybe clear mission. You as a congregation have a heart to care for others in the world. It's obvious in the choices you make. Witness the joy closet. Witness the Christmas giving. Witness generous outreach. Remember, remember all the times that people have given and cared for others. When you hear of a need, you respond to the need. Person to person, one on one. You care. That's a gift from God. You follow Jesus in loving others. So what's the fourth stone? What might that be? Uh, I think everyone is welcome. Now, I know every church says that. Uh, every church says we're friendly and welcoming. Uh, but our denomination is intentionally inclusive. It is a choice that we make. We believe God calls everyone. God welcomes everyone. God uses everyone. God includes everyone. God gives gifts to everyone and expects those gifts to be used in service for others. All are welcome. Period. And diversity is welcome. Seen as a blessing rather than a problem to hide. Uh, questioning is welcome. Doubting is welcome, is encouraged. Doubts are seen as movement deeper into understanding. We don't all have to agree. In fact, if we do all agree, we are probably missing something or someone. There is a place in God's love for everyone, even or perhaps especially those who don't seem welcome everywhere else. As a congregation, we need to live into that call. And not only welcome those who just happen to stumble in when they are here, of course do that, continue doing that, uh, but we need to go out and find those people who, who need to know God's love, those people whom God welcomes and, and share God's love wherever we find them, like Jesus did, standing by the lonely, standing with the lost, the vulnerable, the weak, the outcast. Going out to find those who need God's love and loving them and sharing God's love. Welcome like Jesus does. Love like Jesus does. That's our call. And the fifth stone. What is our fifth faithful gift from God that we can be using in service? Well, I'm going to leave that open. That's the surprise stone, the mystery gift from God, unidentified but absolutely present. That which we need that we don't even know we need. There is a gift from God for each of us and all of us. I'm not, I'm not going to name that stone. I'm going to let you think about it for a while. Ponder what other gift from God is just waiting to be used, waiting to be named. God has surprises in store for us, I'm confident, for our future together. Uh, we simply need to trust God and move forward in faith. <coughs> Live into that future that God has planned for us. Trust God. No giant is too big for God. Even tiny stones are blessed by God's purpose. The power of God is stronger than anything we can imagine. 
Like David, we need big faith. Big faith. God's gift to us, our response to God, big faith. God can do anything. Scripture reminds us again and again, God can do anything, and we who trust in God can do all things by God's purpose. By God's grace, God makes all things possible. Believe that and move forward in faith, knowing God's got all of us in God's hands. Amen. I changed out the affirmation of faith today to use this uh, reading, Our Small Difference. So I encourage you to stand and share what we believe together. Together, God, the brand and of the time, inspires us to get to and act on the small difference we can make. May we bring peace small acts of gentleness and reconciliation. May we bring wealth through small contributions and collaboration. May we bring safety through small acts of consideration and acceptance. May we bring wholeness through small acts of care and service. And in small ways break God, may our small difference make a big contribution to your saving work in our world. Amen. Tremendous need around the world, and we pray for peace 
in our world, in our lives, peace that seems impossible. We pray your guidance to world leaders and to each of us as we try to respond. We pray for people facing violence and those who are injured. We pray for refugees. We pray for children and young people and for all who seek a vision of a better way. We pray for first responders who rush in to help, and we pray for our military and their families who serve generously. We pray for all who try to help in any way they help. Bless their efforts. We ask your blessing on all with particular needs this day. We, we lift to you those whom we're thinking about, those who have been named in this service, those whom we hold in our hearts. We pray for the sick, the hospitalized, those in nursing homes, those who are homebound. We ask your presence and your guidance for all who are facing difficult situations. For those battling illnesses and diseases, we pray strength, courage, and healing. We remember those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We lift to you those who are struggling or sad or lonely or anxious. We pray for those seeking better jobs and ways to support their families. We pray for those who are making difficult decisions in the days ahead. We pray your wisdom. We pray for those who are hungry or homeless or needy, those who are at risk in any way, those who are battling compulsions and addictions. We pray that all who are in need know your presence, know your power, and we, we thank you for the ways that you have made us able to respond to need for the ways you have called us and inspired us and empowered us to make a difference. We also thank you for all that is good, for your light shining in the darkness, for the blessings you have given to each of us and all of us, and we thank you. We pray all these thoughts and the unspoken prayers of our hearts with gratitude. Most of all, we thank you for your love as shown to us every single day and most profoundly for that love lived in your Son, our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray as we now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time of offering meditation, I invite you to meditate about our offerings, our gifts from God, and our gifts to God, and consider all the ways that we are able to respond to the Lord.
Gracious God, for your gifts so many, we are grateful for the ways you call us. We are grateful for the ways you help us to serve others. We ask your inspiration, your mercy, your peace, today and in the days ahead. Amen. Yeah.